Hi, this is section 3.5, Ratios and Proportions. I'm actually going to cover parts of section 3.6 also today, and I think that will make you happy because it will make the next video real, real short uh, for 3.6. Um, to talk about, talk about ratios and proportions, again, we've got to start off with some vocabulary that you need to know. And I'm on page 162. You might want to have your book open to page 162 and be able to look at that as you are taking notes on this material. So the first word we have to understand is what is a ratio? A ratio is just simply a comparison of two numbers, and it'd be a comparison of two numbers via a division. So I guess I should probably write that in. Um, oftentimes when you see a ratio, you'll see it written in fraction form, okay? Like here would be an example of a ratio, 2 over 5. There are a couple other ways I could write this. I could write this as 2, 2, 5 in that way, or even using a colon, 2 to 5. So I would set up a little check mark here next to the fraction. Most of the time we write our ratios in fraction form, but I have also seen ratios written in either of these forms too. All right, but again, most of the time, it, for us anyway, it will be written in fraction form. Um, another vocabulary word is proportion that we need to know. A proportion is simply two fractions that are equal. A proportion is a statement that two fractions, or maybe I should re-say this a little bit, it's two equal fractions or actually equal ratios. That's a proportion. Like here would be a simple proportion um, that's true, and I want you to think about it here. One half equals five tenths. I think you probably know a half and five tenths are the same thing. This would be an example of a proportion. Now, a proportion is always true if you can cross multiply and get the same products. And if you're kind of thinking, like, what the heck did you just say? I use color coding here. This proportion is a true proportion. Here's how I know. If I take 1 times 10, I get 10. If I take 2 times 5, I still get 10. If your proportion is a true proportion, the cross products will always be equal. And that's something important to know. There's a couple different ways that we can solve proportions, and we'll look, look at those today. I would say the easiest way, the one that is probably the most popular, is just to solve proportions using cross products, which is, remember, products is multiply. So let's talk about, let's, let's solve a proportion first, then we'll make sure we're okay with the ratios and a few other things. Um, let's take a look at question number 10. Actually, I kind of wish I would have... Uh, I'm going to erase this and, and start it from scratch. So question number 10, the problem is 36 over 12. The ratio 36 over 12 equals x over 2. It says solve the proportion, check your solution. Well, the easiest thing I think to do is just use cross products. Remember, if this proportion is true, if you multiply this cross product and you multiply this cross product, they have to equal each other. So 36 times 2, well, 36 times 2 is just 72, and 12 times x is 12x. So 72 has to equal 12x if this is a true proportion, and that's an easy equation to solve. I can just quickly divide by 12 to isolate x on the right side. 12 divided by 12 becomes 1, and I get 1x on the right, 72 over 12 is 6, and x is 6. And then I should check it. I can, if I go ahead and I check, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 36 divided by 12 is 3. I know that this was worked out properly. It checks out. There is one other way we can solve a proportion like this. Okay, in section 3, 5 of the book, actually, what I showed you here, the cross products, that's section 3, 6 on how to solve a proportion. Um, there is one more way to solve it. I'm going to show you that. Okay. Um, it, it works like this. Very simple way of, of solving a proportion also. You notice how in our proportion, 
we have 2 and 12 in the denominators. All right. Well, if I multiply each side of my proportion, if I multiply each side of my proportion, I could actually multiply both sides by 2 and 12, or simply, I guess I'll just do what the book is showing. Since I want to get x by itself, I got to get rid of divide by 2. I can multiply each side by 2. Actually, I think I'll just go with that because that's exactly what the book's showing you. So now you know where I'm getting this from the book. Okay? So I want to isolate x. To get rid of divide by 2, I've got to multiply by 2. But if I multiply by 2 on the right, I've got to do the same thing on the left. Well, on the right side, times 2 divided by 2 cancel into 1. So I have 1x by itself. And then in your calculator, you can take 2 times um, 36 over 12, and that ends up being 6. And I'm getting the same thing, as you can see. And, of course, I would check it. You know, when I plug in 6 up here, is 6 over 2 the same as 36 over 12? Yes, it is. Okay? So that's how you can solve a proportion. Pretty easy to do. Um, they're going to ask you some questions about ratios. Are they in simplest form? Like if you look at number 3 right now on page 165, they ask, is this ratio is in simplest form? If not, write it in simplest form. They give us the ratio 14 to 18. Okay? Um, Remember, that is the same thing as 14 over 18. So is that in simplest form? So I'm asking, is there, can I simplify this? Well, yes, I can. This is not in simplest form. I can divide each of these. I can divide 14 and 18 by 2. If I divide 14 by 2, I get 7. And if I divide 19 by 2, I get 9. The simplest form would have been 7 to 9. So, I, so this is not the simplest form. I'm just going to scratch it out. That's not the simplest form. 7 to 9 would have been the simplest way for me to write that ratio. A huge advantage of proportions is they're incredibly easy to use to solve a story problem. So I figured I'd at least work out one of those with you. Okay. Um, it says, let's go to number 50. I'm on page 166, problem 50. It says, a student can read seven pages of a book in 10 minutes. How many pages of a book can a student read in 30 minutes? Okay, so when you do proportions, this might sound kind of weird, but I kind of relate proportions to music. Most of you like music. In music, you've got to have a rhythm. Right? There's got to be a rhythm to your song for you to like it. Well, in proportions, there's got to be a little rhythm to it. Okay? And here's what I mean by rhythm. In this problem, we have student read s seven pages of a book in 10 minutes. How many pages do they read in 30? Okay? There's two ways you can set this up. I can write seven pages, student read seven pages in 10 minutes, and I want that to equal how many pages, so unknown amount of pages, how many pages can they read in 30 minutes? So here's the rhythm to my problem. I did the pages on the top and the minutes on the bottom. Pages top, minutes bottom. There's a rhythm to it. If I have pages on top here, I've got to have minutes down here. If I have pages on top here, then minutes down here. It's got to be pages over minutes. There is a second way I could have set this problem up. I could have put 10 minutes compared to 30 minutes. So small minutes compared to big minutes equals small pages compared to big pages. That's the second way I could have set it up. So you notice, I, if you look on page, if you look on page 163, they actually show a little table they make. And you can see they did it with a tomato problem, the same kind of thing. Um, in my little, in problem 50, I put pages on the top in my way of doing it and minutes on the bottom. Or, or if you don't like that, you could have put minutes over here for this ratio and pages for this one. There's got to be a rhythm to it. Okay, um, let me show you, I'm going to write this in red because this is wrong. Here would be something that I mean if you're not quite sensing what do I mean by rhythm. Here would be something that's wrong. Suppose I write seven pages over ten minutes. 
And then over here, I put 30 minutes over X pages. I've just lost the rhythm. Pages over minutes has to equal pages over minutes. It's not. That is not. This is not a correct proportion. It's, this will not work out correctly. I did not keep that rhythm. Okay? And then all you have to do to solve it, obviously, to solve this, it's easy. We can just cross multiply. Use cross pro products. So 10 times x is 10x. 7 times 30 is 210. And I want to solve that. Divide each side by 10, and you'll get 21. And the neat thing is, if I had set it up this way with minutes, if my rhythm's a little different, but it's the correct mi rhythm, minutes over minutes equals pages over pages. It's kind of like a little song, right? Okay. Watch what happens if I cross multiply this. 10 times x is 10x, which is what I had here, right? And that has to equal 7 times 30, which is 210, which I had here. So does it make sense that I'm getting the exact same equation set up? I'm still going to get 21, even if I set it up in this manner. Okay, so I think that covers what I needed to cover for today for um, proportions and ratios, and that's going to make our 3-6 video real short in our next section. If you have any questions, of course, when we come into class tomorrow, please bring those to me.